Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. It's been a while since I've done a video and uh, trying to get some things done, hoping to relocate very soon. Uh, things never go as fast as you want them to. The reason I'm doing this video is things are getting very serious, people. California has an assembly bill that's called 2943. Now, you think, well, you know, all that crazy stuff in California that happens. How does that affect me? I live in Florida. I live in Texas. You know, I live in the Midwest. Uh... You know, the thing is, the stuff that comes out of New York and California ends up coming to the heartland generally within 5, 10, maybe 20 years. Now, let's take a look at Assembly Bill 2943. There's a paragraph that reads, and I'm going to quote, the task force, what task force? The California task force. The task force concluded that sexual orientation change efforts, uh, if you want to know what a sexual orientation change effort is, get your King James Bible and turn to Romans chapter 1. That's sexual orientation change efforts. Yeah. You know, where, uh, where Paul says that they, they that do such things are worthy of death. Maybe we should read that. Well, yeah, let's go read Romans chapter 1. All right, Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Guess what, people? Uh, the Jews, the Kabbalah, Lubavitch Jews, they're waiting for their uh, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson to be raised from the dead. Well, guess what? They're still waiting. And uh, the Muslims are, you know, did Muhammad come back from the dead? No. So the Church of Satan, Anton Levy, or some say he's Anton uh, Howard Stanton, uh, he changed his name to Anton LaVey. He wanted you to didn't know his name was Levy. That's a nice Jewish name, by the way. Uh, founder of the Church of Satan. Did he rise from the dead? Mm, no. Matter of fact, all they don't come back from the dead until the second resurrection. And the second resurrection, well, that's the white throne judgment, and that's the lake of fire. So, all right, verse 4 again, verse 3. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God, with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace, and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. That word nations there, uh, that same word that they translated nations there is the same word that they sometimes translate as Gentiles. I don't know why they did that. Sometimes they translated the same word nations, sometimes the word Gentiles. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom 
are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. And if you're saved and believe in the Lord, and you're saved and have the Holy Spirit, you're a saint. You don't need uh, a pope to vote that you become a saint. No, you don't need that. So the pope doesn't uh, pick the saints. God picks the saints. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. You didn't know Paul was a southerner, did you? For you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For those of you that don't know it, I was born in Kentucky, which was a part of the southern confederate states and i currently live in florida so i'm more south than georgia so just remember that oh uh, let's see first i thank my god through jesus christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world for god is my witness whom i serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing i make mention of you always in my prayers making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. There's that Gentiles again. Same word as nations. It's the same word. You can look it up in the Strong's Concordance. Um, in the Greek, it was ethnos. In the Hebrew, it was uh, goy or goyim. Same word as nations. Even as among other Gentiles, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Too bad the, uh, what is now the Roman Catholic Church is nothing like what Paul preached back in these days. Verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Now, why is Paul indebted to the Grecians? I mean, after all, the Greeks are not Hebrews, are they? Or are they? Let's take a look at something. Turn to Joel, the book of Joel, chapter 3, starting in verse 4. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Uh, Tyre and Zidon were areas occupied by Canaanite tribes. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, all the coasts of Palestine? Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? That's recompense is payback, people. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. You see, they invaded Judah, Tyre, and Zidon. Verse 6. The children also of Judah and of the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. 
Ooh, okay. You see, they took the children of Judah and sold them to the Grecians. The Grecians are Greeks. They sold them. What do you mean they sold them? They sold them into slavery. The children of Judah went into slavery in Greece. It says right here in Joel chapter 3, verse 6, The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of their place, whither ye have sold them, and will return your recompense unto your own head. Did you ever wonder why the New Testament was written in Greek? The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. Why? Maybe because the Hebrew Israelites were mixed in with the Greeks. What do you think? Romans chapter 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And this right here, people, is the verse that got Martin Luther that great German reformer, was he perfect? No. Are you perfect? No. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. Come judgment day, if God reads every sin that I did, he's going to have, probably have to have some angels help him carry some wheelbarrows in with books written. It's going to look like uh, sets of encyclopedias. Boy, they're, uh, yeah, you get the idea. The just shall live by faith. Martin Luther took that verse and ran with it and, and threw off Romanism. But not the Romanism that Paul's talking about here. He's talking about the stuff that what it, it turned into. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God... For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Do you know people hold the truth in unrighteousness? And it says right here that God had showed it unto them. Verse 20. So when you hear somebody say that they're an atheist and there's no proof of God, verse 20 shows they're liars. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Can you imagine me taking a grandfather clock full of its parts? I mean, you know, back in the old days, they were mechanical. Today, they're electronic, you know. But let's go take a look at a 100-year-old grandfather clock made in the... Uh, you know, Germany, Switzerland, wherever they made them. I don't know where they made them. I, you know, the Swiss were famous for making watches. But you take a grandfather clock that keeps pretty good time with all its parts, and you got to wind it up every day. Can you imagine me showing this to an atheist? And then he looks at the clock, and he says, Wow, that's neat. Look at that great carvings on the wood and and oh wow it keeps really good time and you know you get to see the pendulum swinging back and forth and the hands moving and he says bob where did you get this clock i love it and i says oh um i found it you found it where'd you find it oh i found it on the beach you know it 
It evolved over millions and millions of years and just came together and boom, there it is. I mean, he'd look at you like you're a fool. I mean, really, what am I, a fool? You're going to believe that this thing just formed itself over millions and millions of years? Well, guess what? That's the human body compared to a grandfather clock. A grandfather clock is nothing compared to the complex complexity of the human body. It's just absolutely, I mean, all the different cells, their different functions. For people to believe in evolution, I just don't get it. Verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. What does the Bible say about a fool? Well, let's take a look right here. Book of Psalms, chapter 53, verse 1. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and, done, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Verse 22, Romans 1, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. You know, people, I hate images. I just absolutely hate them. I hate it when you go to churches and they got statues. Yeah. It's just it's not just the Catholic Church. I mean the the Greek Church does it too. They have pictures and images. Ah, uh, I don't know. People put up the the picture of the long brown haired person they call him Jesus. I, I just I don't I don't know. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up. That means God gives up on them. When it says God gave them up, it means God gives up on them. God shrugs his shoulders and says, that's it. Forget about it. I mean, you know, you can only strive with so, somebody for so long. You know, I knew a guy, he was a pretty good guy, and um, he was married to this gal, and, you know, you would think they were really good together, but she was good looking, and some guy that had some money came along and showered her with promises of, you know, the money and stuff, and she she dumped her. She dumped her husband. She dumped him. I mean, after all, he was just a working slob, you know, just go to work every day and, you know, they get by. That's all they were doing. And uh, she ran off. They were together for a while. And then a few years later, he finds somebody that was even more beautiful and got rid of her. Well, guess what? She gave up on her husband. And then when she, you know, she finally got the courage up to go back to her, uh, the guy she dumped, and uh, found out he'd found somebody else and had a child. So he gave up on her. He's like, well, we were together and you left. Money was more important to you than I was. And that's, in a way, it's symbolic of the Lord because 
The Lord considers his church his bride. And some people, money is more important to them than the Lord. A lot of people are like that. Let's take a look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 through 9. But godliness with contentment is great gain. So if you're happy with what the Lord gives you and you're living godly, be happy. For we brought nothing into this world and it's certain we can carry nothing out. I was a volunteer chaplain at the South Florida Veterans Cemetery, and I assure you, I never saw a trailer on the back of the hearse carrying the guy's worldly possessions into the next world. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment that's clothing, and having food and raiment, let us therewith, let us be therewith content. If the Lord gives you food and clothes, be happy, people. Be happy. Some somebody rich comes along, tries to rip your family apart because they got a nice car and fancy jewelry, and you're well. Let's read the next verse. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. You know, it's probably a really good thing that I've never had money in my life. I probably would have overdosed on drugs if I would have had unlimited amounts of money. Um, Lord's blessings that I ran out of money before I overdosed on drugs. And not only that, I'd you know, you hear that uh, this about Donald Trump was hiring, you know, prostitutes and what have you. It wouldn't surprise me if it's true. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it's not. But um, usually when there's smoke, there's fire. But um, I probably would have been very similar when I was uh, younger. So it's a good thing I didn't have a lot of money. So I've noticed uh, men with a lot of money, women throw themselves at them. I've never been that impressed with money, but that's just me. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Perdition means falling down, people, going down to the pit of hell. Romans 1.24, Wherefore God also gave them up, gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts, the lusts of their own hearts. Now you can lust after uh, physical companionship with somebody of the opposite sex or the same sex. You can lust after riches. There's a lot of things. Some people lust after um, fancy cars, you know, Maserati, Lamborghini, Ferrari, whatever, Mercedes Benz. There's a lot of things you can lust after. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Sounds like sodomy, doesn't it? Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. 
For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. What's it talking about? Lesbianism. Verse 27, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense, that's payback, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to regain, retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. Go to, uh, go to any Christian chat room, chat room and start talking about sin and Jesus. And you're going to find these people, unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. These people know what they're doing is wrong. You know, there's a reason why God demanded Sodomites be put to death in the Old Testament. And then people come along and say, well, you know, Jesus came along and he just loves everybody and he doesn't want us to do that anymore. Really? It wasn't that God's laws and his government didn't work it was the people wouldn't do what he said to do. So guess what happened? The Assyrians came and took northern Israel into captivity. The Babylonians came and took southern Judah and Jerusalem into captivity. And then after the Israel rebuilt their temple, after the 70 years were passed, well, guess what? God sent Alexander the Great, and then he sent the Romans, Rome, and they destroyed the temple. They absolutely destroyed it in 70 AD. So, Bob, what has this got to do with anything? Well, California Bill 2943. The task force concluded that sexual orientation change efforts. Hmm. Romans chapter 1, do you think that's sexual orientation change efforts? Can pose critical health risk to lesbian, gay, and bisexual people including confusion, depression, guilt. Why are they guilt, feel guilt? Verse 32, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. The task force concluded that sexual orientation change efforts can pose critical health risks to lesbian, gay, and bisexual people, including confusion, depression, guilt, helplessness, hopelessness, shame. They should be shame. Social withdrawal, suicidality, substance abuse, stress, disappointment, self-blame, 
decreased self-esteem. Yeah, there's churches that teach self-esteem. Oh, feel good about yourself. What was that, Norman Vincent Peale? Uh, pfft. Yeah. Decreased self-esteem and authenticity to others. Increased self-hatred. Hostility and blame toward parents. Hmm. What did it say here? Verse 30. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to reading this. Increased self-hatred, hostility, and blame toward parents. Feelings of anger and betrayal. Loss of friends and potential romantic partners. What does that mean? The dog ran away? Problems in sexual and emotional intimacy. Sexual dysfunction. High-risk sexual behaviors. What does that mean? Not using a condom? A feeling of being dehumanized and untrue to self. A loss of faith. A loss of faith. A loss of faith. And a sense of having wasted time and resources. Do you realize that the great majority of so-called churches in this country are not really churches. Oh, you might hear a little bit of Bible preach, and they might talk about Jesus. But are they really a church? No, they're not. Most buildings that has a pastor and a structure are called 501c3 businesses. Now, people, do me a favor. Pause right now. Get yourself a pen or a pencil and paper and start writing some of this stuff down because, you know, don't take my word on it. Look it up. Most churches, so-called, are a 501c3. And what that is, that refers to the IRS tax-exempt regulations and they tell you things that you can do to keep your tax exempt status and one of those things is not violating public policy well guess what if this bill passes in california it'll be throughout the whole nation probably in 20 years maybe less the way things are going probably a lot less They'll just have to pass it on a federal level instead of, you know, and then people in Texas, they'll just shove it down your throat. The uh, reason I say Texas is because they're, Texas is a pretty conservative uh, state, if you ask me. I've been through there. I, I liked the Texans that I met. Uh, but if you want to maintain your tax-exempt status, in other words, when people pay their throw money in that collection plate. If you don't want to be taxed, uh, you can't go against public policy. Well, guess what? Reading Romans chapter 1 could be going against public policy if these bills get passed. I mean, that's trying to change somebody's sexual orientation. After all, if your six-year-old son wants to be a girl, what business is it of the parents? Right? That's what they tell you. That's what Hollywood tells you. And who runs Hollywood? Well, guess what? I got a when you go into my description link, I've got some uh, interesting links. Now, my uh, I have a Google Plus account where I post news and things like that. And I noticed my posts are getting deleted. I'm also on BitChute, B-I-T, one word, second word, C-H-U-T-E, BitChute. I got a link. And I'm also on Minds. And if you've heard of Colin Flaherty, Don't Make the Black Kids Angry, he's on that channel. And that's one of the reasons why I went there. 
But um, if you want to know who runs the media and how Jews really feel about Jesus, I've got some interesting links. You can go to them, read them yourself. But uh, I put the link for the legislation for California and what I just read, the task force thing about changing the sexual orientation. And let me tell you something, people. I actually am glad to see this. I want to see the church persecuted. I want to see Christians imprisoned and put to death for their faith. Now, I hope you'll listen to me and hear me out. Because what it's going to do, it's going to separate the sheep from the goats. A lot of goats go to church to be entertained and to laugh at the sheep being led astray by bad pastors. You see, your 501c3 churches are a business. They're incorporated by the state. And they can't violate public policy. If you've got a, a sodomite candidate that says he's going to make men who wear a dress go into the bathroom where you, your nine-year-old daughter, and there's nothing you Christian parents can do about it, the church cannot stand up and say, you know what? Don't vote for this guy. He's bad news. If you do that, the IRS will come and take your tax-exempt status away from your 501c3 state-registered corporation with the name church in it. Yeah, it might say First Baptist Church or uh, Church of this or Church of that or Church of Yeshu, whatever. But guess what? It's not a church. It's a state-approved corporation. It's a business that's tax-exempt under federal and state laws. And they're not going to violate statutes like this. They're not going to read Romans 1 when the sodomites complain. You know, it's getting real, people. Persecution is going to change the church. The church is going to have to go underground, just like they did in the days of Rome. Just like they had to do. They had to hide in the mountains and in the caves back when uh, the Vatican, what is today's Roman Catholic Church, were persecuting uh, Bible believers. You know, it's going to separate the church, the real true church, the bride of Christ, from people that just go to church to warm a pew. It's terrible. Persecution is going to wake up the church. What does the Bible say about persecution? Well, look at Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And Saul, Saul became the apostle Paul, and Saul was consenting unto his death. Whose death? Steph, Stephen. And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Acts 13, verse 50. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution. Who raised persecution? The Jews did. Acts 13.50, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. They kicked them out. Paul writes in Romans 8.35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress 
or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? Hmm. The answer is none of those things. In Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Do you suffer persecution? Maybe you're not living godly. You know, if you're claimed to be a Christian and you're out at the gay bar getting drunk and having sex with men and you're a man, you're not going to suffer persecution. But if you're preaching against sin, oh boy. And let me tell you about something, people. Please go to Minds and BitChute and, and hit my channel because you know what? YouTube is going to boot all of the true Christians off. Uh, there was a guy named Chris White. He did a really good study on uh, Jerusalem being Mystery Babylon. And um, he's not perfect on everything. He uh, But he did a really phenomenal study on that. Uh, YouTube deleted a lot of his his stuff. And I mean, the guy preached Bible, just Bible stuff. I mean, you know, I preach the same, teach the same things, but uh, his was so much more in depth than mine. I mean, he went through, I, I mean, I, I gave enough to, to prove, you know, Jerusalem would be mystery Babylon in the last days. But Chris White went into such detail. I mean, he did like a nine-hour study. I mean, there's no way you could walk away from that and say Rome or Washington or New York City or, or whatever or Mecca. There's no way. Absolutely no way. I mean, people do it because they're either deceived or they're deceivers. But... Uh, his, he had uh, he got fed up with YouTube deleting his videos and he left because he probably saw what I'm seeing happening. And let me tell you something, people. They hated Jesus. They're going to hate those that follow Jesus. In John 15, verse 18, Jesus said, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Does the world hate people like Billy Graham? Yeah, I know he's dead. I mean, let's face it. He went to the White House so many times, uh, a bunch of times. You think he would have been invited to, to George Bush's White House if he'd have said, uh, called him an evil, wicked man for bombing Arabs in the Middle East? No, he wouldn't have been invited. No, absolutely not. And, and if you think Jesus is, is pleased because we're bombing Arabs in the Middle East, uh, you must have a different Jesus than I know. I mean, you know, yeah, we're supposed to defend ourselves, but as far as I know, the only Middle Eastern country that ever attacked the United States that I know for a fact was the attack on the USS Liberty in 1967. It was attacked by the Israelis. They machine gunned the survivors in the water. Of course, they say, well, we didn't know it was a U.S. ship. Well, you mean the times, the airstrikes, you didn't know it was a U.S. ship, and the torpedo boats, you couldn't figure out it was a U.S. ship? Um, and by the way, when the USS Liberty tried to, it was very lightly armed. It only had four machine guns on it, which doesn't work against jets dropping bombs and rockets. But... Um, when they tried to call for help, they found out that their radio frequencies were being jammed. And let me tell you something. 
you've got to know what radio frequencies an enemy uses to be able to jam them. I mean, there is no, there's no way you can jam every radio frequency in a war. There's no way. You've got to know the specific frequencies. So they knew the U.S. Navy's naval frequencies and what the ship was using to jam, the, to jam their calls for help. They were finally able to uh, use an alternate one, and a uh, radio operator was, uh, you know, finally got the message. And then when they finally were going to send some help, they were recalled. An aircraft, U.S. aircraft carrier dispatched jets to help our ship, but they were recalled when they found out who was attacking the Liberty. So if you want to bomb a Middle Eastern country that attacked the United States, uh, take a guess. Never happened. You know why they're building, they're attacking all, you know, Syria and, you know, there's probably going to be a war in uh, Iran. Because the Zionists want to rebuild their temple. Start doing animal sacrifices for their Messiah. The Jews have a legend that when they build the temple, the Messiah will come. Well, guess what? He did. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, what's a Pharisee? A Pharisee is a Jew. It's a denomination of the Jews. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But when he, but he, Jesus, but he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yeah, that's true. You know, the, the priests worked on the Sabbath day doing sacrifices. They broke the Sabbath. Maybe we should stone the priests. What do you think? No. Jesus is even telling you. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you, that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. You see, Christ is our Sabbath day. Um... Do I think keeping the Sabbath is bad? Absolutely not. If you want to take Saturday, uh, you know, Friday sunset to Saturday sunset and do Bible studies and rest and commune with God, I think that's a great thing. But is keeping the Sabbath part of salvation? I don't think so. Jesus didn't say, believe on me and keep the Sabbath and thou shalt be saved. No. No. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was to part of thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days? That they might accuse him. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep and it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day? Will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? Yeah. Every single one of those hypocrites, if one of their animals fell into a pit and was in danger of dying, he'd pick it up and put, take it out of the pit. Jesus said, How much then is a man better than a sheep? Good question. 
Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. Jesus called that hypocrisy. All right, let's go to Mark 11, chapter, Mark 11, chapter 11, verse 27. And they came again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, Jesus is walking in the temple, and as he was walking in the temple, there, uh, there came to him the chief priests, these are Jewish priests, not the Catholic priests, there came to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, and say unto him, By what authority doest thou these things? I mean, here it is, Jesus just healed a man, you know, he was raising, uh, he, he was healing people. A man had a withered hand, and he healed him. Lame people were walking, uh, he was healing lepers. I mean, doing all kinds of medical miracles that even doctors today would be astounded at. And say unto him, by what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not why did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they and they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority. I do these things. A lot of people don't know it, but the uh, there's going to be probably a war against Iran. You know, just like uh, they're doing in Syria. You know, the United States, do you know the United States is occupying about one third of Syria? They found oil in Syria. Well, guess what? We're there. We're occupying the area. And the uh, Syrians are like, why are you people here? You say you're fighting ISIS, but uh, we didn't invite you. We don't want you here. So, but, uh, oh, and by the way, they put Trump's image on a temple coin the Jews want to rebuild their little temple and do animal sacrifices to, unto their Messiah, which is not Jesus, by the way. They put Trump's image on a temple coin, a coin. You know when Jesus cast out the money changers? Well, that's what they were doing. They were taking Greek coins and Roman coins of whatever they were made of, silver probably silver, maybe gold. I don't know what they were made out of. And they were exchanging them for temple coins. You know, when you go into the temple and you had to pay a, a certain amount of money for something, um, there was a thing, I think it was called the soldier's ransom. And you'd go there to pay the, the, the thing, but then the Jews would say, oh, well, this has got a picture of the Roman emperor, this coin is not holy. You can't use this. So what they would have to do, or well, what they would do, not have to do, but what they would do is they would exchange your unholy coin for the holy coin. Well, guess what? The whole unholy coin might weigh two or three times as much silver as the coin they were giving you so they were basically cheating you, and that's why Jesus cast out the money changers. 
a lot of people don't know that, but that's that's exactly what was happening. And um, so, you know, they built the temple. The Jews have a legend when they build the temple, the Messiah will come. Well, guess what? Here we go. John chapter 10. Verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. What's the feast of dedication? The Jews call it Hanukkah. Verse 23. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Now, Christ is just the Greek rendering of the Hebrew word Messiah. It means the same thing. It's just different language. You know, so. Uh, what's a taco in Spanish? It's food. What's a taco in English? Food. You know, it's, it's just, they got, it's the Christ and Messiah is the same thing. How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So that's why they're having their little wars in the Middle East. They want to destroy all Arab, Muslim, and Christian opposition to the rebuilding of the temple. And honestly, I don't think it's that far off. I mean, after all, why would they, uh, the Jews coin a temple coin with Trump's image on it? And if you think Trump is going to be your savior, I believe, my opinion, you're going to be sadly disappointed. After all, look at who his son-in-law is. And why would they put Trump's image on a temple coin? Why would they do that? They didn't put Hitler's image on a temple coin. Why would they put Trump? And I'm not comparing Trump to Hitler. But I'm just making a point. In Psalms 118, verse 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Now, most of the people I talk to uh, that voted in the election, they tell me, well, it wasn't so much that they voted for Trump, but rather that they were voting against Hillary. What can I tell you? But, um, so they want to rebuild the temple, start doing animal sacrifices, totally ignoring what Jesus did on the cross, the veil of the temple ripping, the Romans coming in 70 AD and utterly destroying the temple. And what are the churches doing? Teaching tithing. And let me tell you something, people. Your 501c3 business masquerading as a church are going to do everything that the government tells them to do because, after all, they are a government-sanctioned business with government-sanctioned rules on tax exemption. And they don't want to have to pay taxes on the money that they collect from the sheep. So they're going to, you know, if the government says you can't preach against homosexuality, you're hurting their self-esteem. Guess what? Romans chapter 1 will get ripped out of the Bible. That's right. Matter of fact, the 1984 edition of the NIV didn't even have the word sodomite in the, the, their Bible. 
wasn't in there. They changed it to a temple prostitute. Now, is it okay to be a prostitute as long as you don't do it at the temple? Or is it is prostitution okay as long as you don't do it? Let's see. Uh, is prostitution okay as long as you don't do it at the temple? Or can you do it at the temple as long as you're not a prostitute and charge money? In other words, a freebie? I, I don't know. What's a temple prostitute? I, is and What kind of prostitution? Sodomy? I, you know, what's a, what's a temple prostitute? I don't know. There is no temple anymore. So how can they be a temple prostitute? So persecution's coming, people. And it's going to be good. Rejoice. It's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Goats go to church to be entertained. It's disgusting. It makes me want to vomit. In Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You know, in Australia, 20 some odd years ago, they uh, took all the guns from the, Amer uh, the Australians, the Aussies, they totally, almost totally banned all the guns. And what are they doing now? Oh, we got to ban assault rifles, you know. A, I think it was a court in Massachusetts. A, uh, it's not the Supreme Court, but a federal court said that assault weapons, so-called, like AR-15s, are not protected by the Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. Well, guess what? That means they can ban them. Any state that wants to, the federal government can ban them. The only court that could overturn this ruling is the Supreme Court. And guess what? You got four Catholics and three Jews on the Supreme Court. And guess what? Catholics don't like what they call Protestants. I don't consider myself a Protestant, but they do. And Jews, well, if you don't know who killed Jesus, well, I suggest you read the trial of Jesus. Pilate tried to release Jesus, but they wouldn't have it. So you got four Catholics and three Jews. How do you think that's going to run? Well, guess what? Australia, they rounded up all the guns, turned them in. Lo and behold, today... They're taking children from Christian parents and placing them with sodomites, adopting them to sodomites. There was, I think, a five-year-old that was raped to death, internal bleeding when he was raped by a couple of sodomites. The one held him down while the other did their disgusting thing. You still wonder why God commanded sodomites to be put to death? They become teachers in our schools. They teach your children that Christianity is a mental illness and that if a boy wants to be a girl and or whatever, it's perfectly normal. Sodomy is just, you know, God made us this way, they'll tell you. And guess what? In Australia, the leaders the elected leaders of the country, many of them are openly sodomites. There's a group called the OTO, uh, it's the Order of the Golden Dawn, look it up. It's a satanic group. They openly worship Satan, and it's rampant. I mean, there are so many of them in leadership in Australia, chiefs of police, uh, legislatures, uh, 
I mean, they're open about it. But guess what? We took your guns 20 years ago. You can do nothing. We've got the police that have guns protecting us. So if we want to take Christian children from Christian parents and place them with sodomites, you can do nothing. Think about that. Think about that. They want to recruit your children, take them away. You think about that next time you hear people like Chuck Schumer, a nice Jewish boy, wanting gun control. Yeah, think about that, how gun control is working in Germany where they're flooding the people with Muslim refugees and Sweden and Denmark. Think about that. See, what did they do in communist Russia? Get the book Behind Communism. The title of the book is Behind Communism. The author's name is Frank Britton. B-R-I-T-T-O-N. Look up all the names in a modern Jewish encyclopedia. You will find out that communism was very kosher. And communism cannot have, cannot be without, with when people have a righteous indignation and have guns, they don't want that. they got to ban these guns. They've got to do it. So when they ban the guns... And when you see Iran military destroyed and the Jews start to rebuild their temple, look out. I'm not saying it's going to happen exactly the way I think it is. It's just I was saved in 1989. Prior to that, I knew about the, um, the Illuminati. as And no, it's not the Catholic Church. The Illuminati is a branch of the Catholic Church, but it's not the root um, I hate reading stuff by people like Chick Publications. They're the ones that have that little tiny comic book kind of thing. They blame everything on the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is guilty of much, but sorry, they didn't kill Jesus. But um, they've got to have gun control. They've got to have it. They don't want Christians rising up and being, having holy, righteous indignation against sodomites raping to death a five-year-old boy. They can't have that. So they're going to have to do what they did in Australia and Germany and France and England. Oh yeah, technically in England you can own a gun. But you've got to be a member of a hunting club, which is sort of like a country club. You know, it's many, many, many thousands of dollars that the average person cannot afford. And then if you do have a gun, it's got to be locked up in a safe at the hunting club. And the hunting club is only open uh, during hunting season. So, you know, oh yeah, you technically own the gun, but you can't take it home. It has to be locked up in the safe at the hunting club. So if somebody breaks in your house, um, I hope you got a go good phone that dials 911. So, well, they don't use 911 in England. They do here in the United States. So, and just remember, when seconds count, the police are only minutes away. Oh, there was a, um, a black woman that was an, um, probably an affirmative action hire in Houston, Texas. She was given 10 days in jail and 18 months probation for uh, repeatedly hanging up on thousands of 911 calls. When she went to court, she says, well, I just, I just didn't want to talk to them people. Yeah, your house is you're you're in the, there's a home invasion or or your wife or husband has a heart attack and you dial 911 and they hang up on you. I mean, really? You know, your 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 family's being murdered and a 911 dispatcher hangs up on you? Really? Maybe you maybe some people didn't get a second chance to to make a phone call. I just didn't feel like talking to them people. Yeah, look her name up. Her name is Krishandra Williams, C-R-E-N-S-H-A-N-D-A -E -A Williams. Wow, really something, huh? So when seconds count, 
The police are only minutes away. And you can really believe the government when they tell you that you have no need for a gun. Especially when you got Houston 911 operator. Oh, by the way, uh, she was dating a gang member. And uh, I, well, I'm not sure if it's, a, I should, let me re, let me rephrase that. I might be in error. There was a 911 dispatcher that was dating. I don't know if it's the same one. There was a 911 dispatcher that was dating a gang member who was doing robberies. And when people would call about a robbery in progress and she knew it was him, she would text him and say, they're, you know, they know or something and let him leave. And she'd warn him. I don't know if it's the same one. I could be wrong. So what can I tell you, people? Christianity. Do you know Christianity is technically illegal in the United States? Thanks to the Noahide laws, N-O-A-H-I-D-E. Yeah, a Jewish rabbi, Menachem Schneerson, had, uh, I think it was Reagan, and then Bush, and I think Clinton, they all reaffirmed it. The Noahide Laws, written by a Jewish rabbis, and basically they sound good on the surface, but then they say that you will not blaspheme God by worshiping false gods. Well, guess what? According to them, Jesus is a false god. Guess what the punishment is? Death. It's on the books. Look up. U.S. Noahide Laws, N-O-A-H-I-D-E. Look it up. It's on the books. It's not being enforced. Wait till they ban your guns. You know, it always starts with, uh, oh, well, we just want to ban guns with high-capacity magazines. Well, guess what? Half the guns in the United States have magazines. So then they'll say, well, you know, we got to get rid of revolvers. They're, you know, concealable. They're murder weapons. And then shotguns, and then sniper rifles. Did you know your hunting rifle's a sniper rifle? Yeah, it's a single-shot sniper weapon. we got to get rid of sniper rifles. They're evil. And then you're going to find the no-hide laws being enforced. And then they're going to do to you what the kosher communists did to the Christians in Russia. Millions of dead Christians. Trust me, people. Well, don't trust me. Trust Christ. Jesus warned us that there'd be famines, wars, pestilences. I mean, if Jesus warned you, you know, you should pay attention and listen to him. Don't listen to me. Read Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Read Mark 13. Persecution's coming, people, but you know what? It's good. I want to see these Zionist so-called Christians either deny their faith in Jesus or be killed by the same people they supported who hate Jesus and Christians. I'm actually looking forward to it. I hope I get to see it. Yeah, you know, pew warmers. Church people, I call them. You know, and Jesus said, if you deny me before men, well, let's take a look. What did Jesus say? Matthew 10, 33, Whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father, which is in heaven. Yes, I know Peter denied him three times, but after that, Peter became very, very bold and proclaimed Jesus. You know, one of the reasons why the uh, this satanic mystery Babylon one world order comes is because people didn't want Christ as their king. They didn't want God as their king. They didn't want God and his laws. So God is going to test us and show you why 
his ways are better than our ways. You know, if we got rid of sodomites, they wouldn't become police and pass laws and take Christians' homeschooled children away from them and place them with sodomites where they could be raped to death. But you have Christians that'll say, oh, well, we can't do that because they might get saved. Well, you know what? I'm more worried about a five-year-old being saved than I am about a sodomite being saved. They can possibly be saved, but that's not up to me to say. And if you don't like, like it, well... What can I tell you? Read Romans 1 again. And if you deny Christ, remember Matthew 7 and verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast, have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Think twice about denying Jesus, people. Persecution's coming, and I'm telling you what, you're not going to find much Jesus in the modern church. Matter of fact, the modern church, the 501c3 corporation, is the reason why the church is the mess it is. Everybody tells me, oh, well, Billy Graham, he got millions of people saved. Really? Then, then why is abortion legal? If, the, if there's all these millions and millions and millions and millions of Christians that said a 30-second sinner's prayer... Why is abortion legal? Why is prayer not in the public schools like it was for 200 and something years? Why? The United States has dishonored the Lord. We've murdered our unborn children. We removed prayer in Jesus' name and the Bible from the public schools. We did, we've, the United States has dishonored the Lord Jesus. He's not going to protect this country. He's going to allow us to go right into the mystery Babylon. The Jews will destroy all their opposition to their temple. They're going to probably rebuild the temple. And then their Messiah will come. We call him the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the Antichrist. And... They're going to put Christians to death. Remember, Jesus said, If you deny him before men, he will deny you before the Father. But just remember, in Luke 12, 32, Jesus said, Fear not little flock, little flock. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. All right, well, I hope you learned something. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. That's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.